Well, thank you, colleagues, and uh, what a beautiful Alberta day. What a great summer day in a great Alberta summer. I'm delighted to be here uh, with these ministers who are part of the renewal of Alberta's government at a time of renewal for our province. We've been through 16 incredibly tough months, a time of real adversity. And together, Albertans have overcome a once-in-a-century public health crisis and a once-in-a-century challenge to our economy. Uh, but now Alberta is the first province to be fully open. We are leading Canada out of the pandemic and leading Canada in economic growth. Uh, today, we've made some changes to the leadership team in Alberta's government uh, to really put the pedal to the metal on our economic growth strategy and Alberta's recovery plan uh, to fire on all cylinders to make sure that uh, uh, we recover not only from the COVID recession, but from the last five tough years. And there are all sorts of positive signs. Just yesterday, CIBC confirming the view of other banks and think tanks that Alberta is uh, leading Canada in economic growth this year and will do so again next year and doing that by a country mile. But it's not going to happen uh, by itself. It's going to require the right kind of open for business policies that, to get people back to work, to build this province, to ensure a strong future for our largest and historic industries while also diversifying Alberta's economy. So uh, together with our other ministers, this renewed team uh, can help lead the province in that direction. I want to thank Minister Sani for uh, her two great years of uh, compassionate leadership at Community and Social Services and now agreeing to take up one of the most important economic industries, uh, excuse me, ministries in Alberta's government, transportation, which uh, to oversee uh, the largest ever building program in Alberta history, uh, the lion's share of the $21 billion Alberta government infrastructure build that we're going to see over the next three years, getting people back to work and building the architecture of our future economy. Uh, and Rajan comes to public service with a, a master's in business administration with uh, a role, uh, roles, leadership roles in the private sector, including in the oil and gas industry. Uh, and, and so I know that, that she's ready to, ready to roll when it comes to, um, to building the province, including uh, the, managing the province's $1.5 billion commitment for the completion of the Calgary uh, LRT Green Line project. I also want to uh, welcome back to the ministry Tanya Fur, MLA for Calgary Pagan, uh, as Associate Minister for Red Tape Reduction. Cutting job killing uh, red tape was one of the central commitments that we made to Albertans in the last election. Our goal it has been to cut that job killing red tape by at least one third in this term of government. And I, I want to thank um, outgoing Associate Minister Hunter for, and his team for their great work. We are now at, I believe, 17 percent uh, reduction, which is uh, over halfway there. We've eliminated nearly 120,000 Alberta government regulations. Uh, uh, but there's more work to be done. We've got to put the pedal to the metal, and, and Tanya uh, is determined uh, to lead that process so that we become the freest and fastest moving economy in North America. Uh, I want to welcome uh, Nate Horner to Executive Council. He's uh, a strong representative of, of his constituency and uh, has deep roots in rural Alberta uh, as a rancher. And um, we've created this new position of Associate Minister for Rural Economic Development. He'll be working with Minister Schweitzer at Jobs, Economy and Innovation uh, to ensure a particular focus uh, on uh, wealth creation, job creation and development in rural Alberta. For example, he'll be working with Minister Glubish on a very bold strategy for rural broadband to ensure that rural Albertans are fully connected uh, to the digital economy. And uh, he'll be working with Minister uh, Dreeshen on the largest renewal of our irrigation infrastructure in over six decades, an $840 million game-changing initial investment in irrigation renewal with potential other major projects and so much more uh, to come. Very, thank you very much, Nate, uh, for stepping up to lead in this way. I uh, want to thank Mohamed Yassin, uh, who is, is going from being a parliamentary secretary uh, for I immigration to uh, an associate minister for immigration and multiculturalism. And Mohamed will be working, uh, by the way, Mohamed is um, a, a remarkable man. Uh, he uh, ha has, I, 
an advanced engineering degree and an MBA, and I, I don't, I, I think took a couple of other degrees. He was one of the senior most engineers at Imperial Oil for like 25 years. Um, this, this is a, a man of, of incredible intelligence, and I, uh, he's going to be working with Minister Copping on rolling out our, our promised Alberta Advantage Immigration Strategy, which was a platform commitment. A lot of that work has already been done. It was kind of put on hold during the pandemic because it, you know, immigration was largely suspended. But I believe that what we're seeing now from businesses is one of the biggest emerging challenges in our economy is skill and labor shortages. And I think that in the next six to 12 months, that will become the biggest challenge in our province, a good challenge. And Mohammed, uh, working with Jason on the Alberta Advantage Immigration Strategy will help to address that. But there's another issue that I've asked uh, Mohammed to focus on. Uh, well, of course, the, the implementation of the Fairness for Newcomers uh, action plan which is to knock down barriers that exist uh, to the full inclusion of new Albertans in our labor force. The unfair uh, regulatory practices of, of credentialing agencies that have too many do doctors driving taxi cabs. That, that problem, Mohammed has already done a lot of work on our um, Fairness for Newcomers Action Plan. He's going to double down on that now. But the other thing I've asked him to, to focus on uh, is is the, the challenge we, we are seeing in terms of expressions of racism in our society. Um, I, and uh, we have seen uh, just a, appalling attacks uh, on, on Albertans uh, from uh, racial and ethnic minority backgrounds, um, including, as you know, a member of, of our cabinet here, a member of her family. And uh, we must do everything we can uh, to, uh, to, to identify what are the causes of this, uh, what are the patterns and, and what more can Alberta do uh, to ensure the safety, security and, and peacefulness uh, for all people to live, um, realize their potential in Alberta? So I've asked Mohammed in the capacity as Associate Minister for Multiculturalism to work with Minister Madhu over at Justice and uh, as well as um, right across government uh, to do whatever we can to address uh, the, 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 the scourge of racism in our society. Whitney uh, Isaac, I want to welcome t uh, as Chief Government Whip a critical role in coordinating the government team and its, uh, its action plan through the legislature, but also we now have uh, a dedicated uh, minister for uh, the status of women, which I think is going to be a key part of the recovery strategy. We know that women have been disproportionately affected by the COVID economic crisis and uh, she'll be working with uh, right across government uh, to ensure that, that uh, uh, women are fully included in the dynamic recovery in Alberta's economic future. Thank you to uh, MLA Ron Orr, uh, one of the veterans in our caucus, uh, for stepping up as Minister for Culture. Ron was a very effective culture critic in opposition. Uh, he uh, is a, a man of, of great thoughtfulness, uh, passion and, and conviction. He is committed to uh, ensuring that the cultural industries play a key role in Alberta's economic recovery. But I'm also going to mandate him to focus on one of the recommendations of the Fair Deal panel uh, from 20, uh, from about a year ago, and that was recommendation 25, to affirm Alberta's cultural, economic, and political uniqueness in law and government policy through an Alberta identity strategy uh, to make sure that Albertans know uh, about uh, our, our past, uh, celebrate the, uh, what's best about it, uh, and have that civic literacy uh, that uh, is so important for our future. Thank you to Mike Ellis uh, for his service as Chief Government Whip over the past two challenging years. Uh, Mike, as you know, is a former sergeant in the Calgary Police Service, and in that role, he um, uh, led a squad in, in downtown Calgary dealing with um, many people coping with challenges like addictions and mental health uh, challenges, and, uh, and he's very passionate about, and, and compassionate about ensuring that those people uh, facing mental, mental illness and addictions have all of the support uh, they need. Uh, to recover and to lead good lives. And so I want to thank uh, Mike for stepping up as Associate Minister for Mental Health and Addictions. As you know, this is the first time that, in this government, first time that position has existed, a specific focus 
on mental health and addictions in the Alberta government. Um, it was a key platform commitment. I want to thank Jason Lewan and his team uh, for their, their tremendous work over the past two years in developing our uh, recovery-oriented system uh, uh, with the continuum of care, with historic, unprecedented investments uh, in helping, to pe helping people to escape the trap of addictions, and I know Mike will carry that on with real passion. And finally, uh, thanks to Jason Luan for now moving to become Minister of Community and Social Services. It's actually a perfect fit for Minister Luan. He is a, uh, a trained social worker, and he was a senior manager with the City of Calgary in their community outreach uh, to agencies dealing with social challenges. So uh, he's going to be, he's, he's job ready on day one uh, for the challenging task of ensuring that Alber vulnerable Albertans have the support they need, uh, including for those who, who want to enter the labour force. We want to make sure that, that, for example, persons with disabilities have the support and the training, the equipment that they need to get into the labour force uh, and, that, uh, and that people um, who, who might be on income support have the support and training opportunities that they need as well. We're going to need the talents of all Albertans as we move into this uh, period of dynamic economic recovery and uh, Jason uh, will be in part responsible for making that happen. I, I should also uh, acknowledge that uh, we have appointed um, Joseph Scow, uh, MLA for Cardston Siksika, formerly Deputy Whip. He is now going to be the uh, Deputy Government House Leader. It's a bit of a change from uh, at least recent practice in Alberta where several ministers have filled that role. Joseph will be the dedicated uh, Government House Leader and helping to to move our, um, keep our promises to Albertans by moving our legislative agenda through the Ledge Assembly. Uh, and I want to thank Brad Rutherford, MLA for uh, Leduc Beaumont, a former Edmonton Police Service officer, for stepping up to work with Whitney as Deputy Government Whip. And, uh, and finally, I'm pleased to announce today that uh, Pam Livingston, uh, effective immediately, is uh, the Chief of Staff to the Premier. She's been the, uh, acting as the Deputy Chief of Staff for the past few months. And I want to thank uh, Larry Komeyer uh, for having uh, filled that a critical role over the past six really tough months uh, as Acting Chief of Staff. He returns uh, to his original appointment as Principal Secretary to the Premier, focusing on our biggest files, our, particularly our priority economic files. They, the two of them, uh, Pam and Larry, are a fantastic team. So altogether, this is uh, an important sign of renewal in Alberta's government as we move forward uh, to take on the challenges of, uh, of leading Canada in economic growth, continuing to deliver on our uh, campaign commitments to Alberta, fighting for a fair deal, uh, building a strong Alberta. Uh, and with that, I'm happy to take your questions. So we will start on the phones today. I'll just remind everyone it'll be one question and one follow-up. Operator, can you please put through our first caller? First question is from Rick Bell with the Calgary Sun. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, good morning, Premier. Um, you, you talked about this being a time for renewal, and that's the reason for the cabinet shuffle. Uh, but how much of this cabinet shuffle is also about or in reaction to some of the uh, discontent, dissenters, unrest within the United Conservative Caucus? It's not about dealing that. With that issue. Yeah, it's not about that, Rick. Thank. We put all of that uh, behind us. It's obvious that uh, Albertans um, were uh, divided in how best to address the pandemic crisis, and in our caucus, we saw people representing a diverse range of views, as you would expect in a democracy. Uh, I know the uh, the NDP um, was sh shocked and appalled that that elected representatives might actually represent their constituents and have a range of views, but I actually think that's democracy. Uh, I can tell you, Rick, that um, since our government announced the Open for Summer Plan and we've led Canada out of the pandemic, the first province with no public health restrictions outside of hospitals, since we've done that, I, I've had a real sense of uh, a, re a renewed sense of unity and common purpose uh, in the United Conservative Caucus. We have a great new caucus chair, uh, Nathan Newdorf, who's committed to that. And I know uh, that the new government whip, Whitney Isaac, and her team will, will work closely uh, with him on, on, on that. But I, I really think uh, that, uh, that that is all behind us uh, today is about the future, not the past. And it's about uh, doing 
like I say, putting the pedal to the metal on our economic recovery and on keeping our commitments. Every now and then, a government uh, needs to renew its team. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a good and natural thing to do, and, and uh, that's what we're doing here today. And do you have a follow-up, Rick? Yes. Um, conservatives are generally seen as being in favor of smaller government, and your cabinet now is a bit larger, quite a bit larger. Um, how do you reconcile those two things? Well, actually, we're not creating any new government ministries here, so there's no additional bureauc bureaucracy. Uh, we're simply having a, a couple of folks who are working as, as MLAs and, and uh, parliamentary secretaries uh, to step up and, and help carry the, the workload uh, of ministers. So it's more hands on deck to get more done for Albertans without creating uh, an ounce of additional bureaucracy. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Next is Lisa Corbella with Post Media. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call, Premier. Um, there's a saying, you know, in politics that timing is everything. And so I think back to the beginning of this pandemic, um, when you and your government tore up the contract with Alberta's doctors, uh, just one month before COVID-19 lockdown happened. And so I'm just wondering in retrospect um, if you regret your actions of February 2020. And I'm also wondering why you didn't use this opportunity of a cabinet shuffle to uh, move Health Minister Shandro out of health and into a new portfolio so that doctors and nurses can start fresh with a new minister and maybe have a bit more confidence. Well, in the minister. Well, Alicia, first of all, I, I don't agree with your characterization. The master agreement with the Medical Association allowed for government to terminate it. We had sought to negotiate a new master agreement and didn't have uh, anything like a positive response in the uh, fall and, uh, and into the winter of 2019-2020. Uh, uh, as you know, um, physician compensation is uh, the single largest item of Alberta's budget. We spend 10% uh, of our budget on physician compensation and a quarter of the health care budget. Uh, and that's understandable because we value our physicians. We want them not, to just, not just to be paid fairly, but to be paid generously. But um, in, in the midst of an ongoing fiscal crisis, we also need some budget management tools. Uh, we can't allow uh, any part of government spending, let alone the largest portion of it, uh, to go up annually by by six percent or more, and um, and, and we we simply uh, have wanted to work out a solution with the medical association, where our physicians are compensated. Perhaps even they uh, they are compensated better than in any other province, and we're happy to carry that on. But we do need some management tools so that we um, we we can. Uh, ensure the sustainability of health care in the future. That's the challenge that, that Minister Shandro has had. As you know, they, he had a, uh, a, an interim agreement or agreement in principle uh, with the AMA. Unfortunately, it was uh, narrowly failed on a ratification vote. On, uh, there are ongoing discussions, and we, we, uh, Minister Shandro is, is, I think, uh, deeply engaged in those discussions. Uh, I think he uh, has done a tremendous job of helping to lead Alberta through uh, this brutal pandemic, we've ended up with a COVID per capita fatality rate that is 27% lower than Canada's fatality rate. That is uh, about one third lower than the fatality rates in Europe and the United States. And we've managed to do that with less damaging public health restrictions. I won't pretend that we got everything perfectly right, but I think that speaks to a strong record on the part of Alberta and Albertans in facing the challenge of the pandemic. And now uh, Minister Shandro can take uh, two years of hard-earned experience uh, to apply that to um, uh, moving forward with our uh, surgical initiative, radically to reduce surgical wait times, to put the patient at the center of the medical system, also to implement some of the recommendations of the Ernst & Young report that we committed to in the last election on finding, um, on eliminating waste and inefficiency in the health system so we can move those dollars uh, to patient care. So uh, I, um, I, I thank uh, uh, Tyler for his hard work and look forward to uh, his continued leadership in that critical portfolio. Do you have a follow-up, Leisha? Yeah, I was just thinking about the red tape reduction file and um, 
Minister Hunter before that, and you, you were talking about how much has been reduced in government uh, bureaucracy and red tape, a 17% reduction, um, and yet you sh shuffled him out with no place to go. And so I'm just wondering why that happened. Well, as I said, uh, Grant's done a very good job there and appreciate it. He, his, under his leadership, we've gone from an F to an A on the CFIB's red tape report card. Uh, and I look forward to, to continuing to work with Grant, and I'm sure we'll find uh, uh, new ways for him to, to make a, a particular contribution to the work of this government. Uh, but, Leash, at the end of the day, there needs to be renewal every now and then within a government. Uh, that, that comes down... I, the, uh, somebody, whoever's in my job, has the tough call to make of ensuring that there is uh, is some movement and that people who have been serving uh, capably uh, as private members have an opportunity to uh, demonstrate their ability in ministerial positions. Uh, but not every one of the the 60 some uh, government MLAs can serve in a ministerial capacity. So, you know, re regrettably, there have to be changes every now and then. But uh, I I am really confident that. Uh, we have in Minister Fur, um, who who comes from an oil uh, oil oil industry background, uh, and and is an industry professional, uh, and who's a very determined person, um, a, will have a renewed focus in uh, reduction, a key part of our economic growth strategy. Okay, we'll now come to questions on the ground. If you want to go ahead, Janet. Hi there, Janet French from the CBC. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the negotiations with the United Nurses of Alberta right now. So, you know, when this news came out after the first day of bargaining, the UNA said, well, actually their position has changed. Before they were uh, seeking wage freezes, now the government slash AHS wants wage rollbacks. But yet, we've seen the demands on the health system obviously be quite high during the pandemic and now you've got this surgical initiative which is going to take a lot of personnel and now we're, we're seeing you know bed shortages results in some closures in some rural hospitals so why now for seeking a rollback for nurse wages well uh, first of all let me say how much all Albertans appreciate the professionalism and care uh, provided by nurses and, and other frontline health care workers particularly during the COVID pandemic and uh, we, that, that's one of the reasons we extended the, uh, the COVID uh, wage top up to nurses is the only um, category of people who are not low wage workers to, to benefit from that just as a, as a small expression of gratitude on behalf of Albertans. Um, I, I would refer you back, Janet, to uh, Dr. Janice McKinnon's uh, panel on uh, Alberta's finances where she underscored that the wage costs in Alberta's health system are substantially higher than in other provinces. I think in the case of, uh, of nurses, for example, that, the, that on average their compensation uh, is about 5.6% higher than the average across Canada. We, are, uh, we have a, a $16, $17 billion deficit. We have had a, a string of the largest deficits in the province's history. This government is not going to uh, squeeze more money out of taxpayers by raising their taxes to deal with that. We just need to operate more efficiently. And now, of course, that in has to include uh, the most expensive health care system in Canada, uh, uh, which, um, which is why we were in these negotiations going to seek uh, some savings that we can then reallocate to patient care. Every, any dollar that we save uh, in collective bargaining negotiations, uh, or for that matter, in a new agreement with the Medical Association, 100% of, of those savings will be kept in the health system to improve patient care, to help fund things like the initiative to reduce surgical wait times. Uh, so these are negotiations. I don't want to comment too much on it. I want to respect the, uh, the process. Uh, and um, I, I, th but this has been the mandate that the, the mandate to which you've referred that that uh, uh, that's been the mandate of of the government of cabinet uh, for months now. So nothing has changed in that respect. Just switching gears to the person we're not seeing here today or staying on cabinet, which is Leela Ahir, who is a woman with a fair amount of experience uh, in in the legislature. Uh, I'm, she also was one of the people who asked you to apologize for, for your appearance on the balcony, you know, in, in violation of public health restrictions at the time. Um, I'm curious if there's any connection there. How do you explain her absence now from cabinet after, well, you know, her portfolio was relatively scandal free? Well, as I say, uh, this is a time for renewal and that means there has to be some changes. Appreciate uh, Leela's contribution to the government in the past and, 
and I very much hope so in the future, uh, but uh, not everybody in caucus can serve in a ministerial role at the same time. We, I think it's important that we have opportunities for renewal, and uh, that's what to today represents is an opportunity for renewal. Uh, but from time to time, there will be changes made uh, to ministry. And, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of different factors that go into um, putting together uh, the, the best possible collection of ministers at any given time. Uh, this is not about that or any particular incident. This is just about uh, an opportunity for renewal. Um, and I've described why we've chosen these ministers in my opening remarks. Uh, Premier Michelle Belfontaine from CBC. I just wanted to follow up on Janet's question. I mean, we have heard that, you know, we, of course, we know that Ms. here was a critic of yours, and we've also heard that Mr. Hunter was also a critic of yours. So I'm wondering if you can explain to Albertans how this is not a punishment for both of these individuals. Well, there are people standing behind me who were critical of the government publicly in its uh, COVID response who are now uh, newly in uh, the ministry and serving in executive council. Uh, so I, um, I always invite constructive criticism. And, uh, but at the end of the day, of course, we always have to work as a team to get the job done in a professional way. Uh, and uh, this is a time, an opportunity for renewal. From time to time, you're going to have uh, you, uh, any government that wants to show that it is um, uh, dynamic is going to provide opportunities uh, for members to offer service in a ministerial capacity. And that means moving people on. Um, I, 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 I'll tell you this, I, I value enormously the work that private members of the legislature do, government members do. And uh, clearly, because standing behind me are a number of folks for the past two years have, have served in that capacity. Uh, and so there's always an opportunity for new ways to contribute. Um, I don't see this kind of hierarchically, that uh, ministry, uh, ministerial service is not the only form of public or government service. Uh, and uh, we've got a, a lot of, of, of private members serving the government in, in critical capacities. I mean, I, Ms. Isaac, Minister Isaac, who's just joining us in, as, as WIP, has, just to pick out one example, has done amazing work uh, assisting the Minister of the Environment on critical issues around climate policy and energy in the environment. Uh, I could go right down the line here of these uh, members who have all made very substantial contributions, so I expect that will be the case uh, for the two members who today are departing Executive Council. And just as a follow-up, um, I think one of the more curious uh, appointments that you made uh, is Ron Orr as Culture Minister, and I wonder what uh, background Mr. Orr has in culture industries, uh, you know, whether it's music, theater, film, whatever. Well, Mr. Orr was the shadow minister for culture in the official opposition. And when I uh, became leader of the opposition, I reappointed him to that position uh, after having sat down with him and, and, and seen firsthand his uh, deep knowledge uh, about and commitment to uh, the cultural industries. Uh, Ron uh, was a tenacious advocate uh, for the culture industries in uh, in opposition, and that's why he's always been in the back of my mind as somebody uh, who's passionate about that. And um, in particular, I, I, you know, in addition to ensuring that cultural industries have uh, a uh, participate fully in the economic recovery, I also want Ron uh, to focus on uh, the recommendation of the Fair Deal Panel, uh, which is an Alberta identity strategy. Uh, to celebrate those aspects of Alberta's culture that are unique. And uh, I think uh, that, that Ron, uh, bringing a, uh, a rural Alberta perspective, uh, really understands that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to working with him on, on that initiative. Oh, thanks. thanks, Premier Catherine Rukowski with Alberta Today. You had mentioned um, the immigration strategy and how um, Alberta was hit hardest by the pandemic um, economically. I'm wondering what if anything changes um, from your original plan in 2019 for the immigration strategy? Well, it, 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 we did articulate four new designated streams for the Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program in the platform with respect to the Alberta Advantage Immigration Strategy. And stay tuned, we will be launching uh, I, two, three of those streams, I believe, later this month. Uh, Mohammed has been working on that with uh, Minister Copping. Um, we were ready to roll with those about 14 months ago, but then we got into the pandemic, travel was stopped, and frankly, with 25% unemployment in the second quarter of last year, 
it didn't make any sense to be um, welcoming immigrants to face unemployment in, in a, uh, during a catastrophic recession. So now everything has changed. Now we are hearing about uh, labor shortages. And now we want to launch those innovative new programs, including the, uh, the startup visa, which will uh, offer fast track work permits leading to permanent residency for foreign nationals who want to start a business in this province. And we're really going to focus that on um, foreign nationals living in the US in the tech sector doing tech startups, but they can't get their green card because of the broken US immigration system. That's one exciting stream. Another one will be the, uh, the rural entrepreneurship program to connect uh, future immigrants with business opportunities to start or buy businesses, especially in rural Alberta, where there's a population uh, retention challenge. And then thirdly, the uh, rural renewal program. Uh, but there's also, we're also committed to the uh, foreign student um, a program that will invite graduating foreign students uh, if they decide to start a business to stay in Alberta. There will be other uh, reforms to be announced uh, by Mohammed and Jason, and um, they they also will be hosting the Alberta uh, the the Fairness for Newcomers Summit this summer, that will call to account the professional licensing bodies that have not been giving a fair pathway to credential recognition for newcomers. And um, several of these ministries now have s more associate ministries. And I'm wondering, as all these um, roles are broken up into chunks, where does tourism land? Well, tourism is um, at, uh, situated at Jobs, Economy and Innovation under Minister Schweitzer's leadership. And he does have the support of a parliamentary secretary uh, for small business and tourism. That's MLA Martin Long. Uh, and it's a very important part of a recovery strategy. And, and by the way, let me segue to say that uh, I, the first issue I raised with Prime Minister Trudeau ye yesterday in our meeting was to urge him to, to reopen the borders for safe travel. Um, we see almost every industry here in Alberta uh, firing on all cylinders, uh, obviously oil and gas, but forestry, agriculture, tech, venture capital, film and television, uh, manufacturing, big new industries like hydrogen, but there's one big industry that's being held back by the federal government. 800,000 workers in travel and tourism cannot get back to work. We have a, one of the largest tourism industries in the country here proportionately. So I'm urging the federal government um, to f follow the recommendation of, of the provinces uh, and allow foreign travelers who are fully vaccinated and have a negative piece, uh, COVID test to come here without a quarantine requirement. That is, it's not scientific. If you're fully vaccinated and you get a negative test, please come here uh, and, and enjoy Alberta. We have begun, by the way, our, our tourism promotion campaign. We're the first province in Canada to be advertising in other provinces, welcoming fellow Canadians to come and enjoy uh, this magnificent uh, province. Um, and we have added $23 million to the budget for Tourism Alberta this year and for the next two years. Um, we also have a brilliant new CEO of Tourism Alberta, David Goldstein, with whom I was uh, meeting, ch chatting last night. So tourism is a big part of our future focus, but we got to get uh, air aircraft back in the air, bringing visitors here. I'll just note we have time for two more questions. Hi, Premier. Uh, Jeremy Thompson with CTV News in Edmonton here. <clears throat> Just wondering about some changes that you decided not to make during this cabinet shuffle here. Uh, touched on uh, Health Minister Shandro already here, but a few other ministers have had some heavy criticism from, from their work from the public. I'm thinking of uh, Education Minister LaGrange, uh, perhaps even uh, Ministers Nixon uh, and Taves. So given that uh, analysis by the public about their performance, would seem that that you're making your cabinet decisions on, you know, political ideology rather than uh, performance. Is that is no, that no, not the case? No, nothing could be further from the truth. And I, I find it interesting that that uh, CTV believes it has some kind of, uh, uh, it represents uh, broad public opinion that you could speak for the entire Alberta public. Um, this is a, a democracy and a responsible government in the Westminster system uh, where, where uh, I'm entrusted with appointing people uh, to executive responsibilities based on uh, their ability in a number uh, of, of criteria. I think all of those ministers have done a fantastic job. Uh, they have my uh, complete support. Um, this has been a challenging time and I, I don't think it should surprise anyone that certain special interest groups 
um, that want unlimited increases in taxpayer spending would be opposed to a government that is trying prudently to manage the province's finances. That goes without saying. Uh, you know, you go back to the Klein government that got re-elected four times with historic majorities, uh, that cut government spending by 20%, whereas this government is doing it by like 2 or 3%. Uh, that government was re-elected four times, and the same special interest groups who said the same things that you have just repeated word for word wanted all of the Klein ministers fired. They wanted Ralph Klein fired, but you know who kept hiring them back? The voters of Alberta. Just res respectfully, you know, our special interest groups, would you consider the Teachers Association and, and you know, Nurses Union and, and those sorts uh, of uh, groups? It, uh, unions that benefit from government, uh, from taxpayer dollars, wa always want more taxpayer dollars. That's not exactly a revelation. Uh, our job as government uh, is, to, is to ensure high quality public services, supporting the great people who deliver those services, but not allowing uh, union bosses to dictate the direction of the province's finances, because if we did that, we'd be in the poorhouse forever. I'm going to ask you to repeat just two questions you, you said, but in French, please. Sure. Um, la grande absente qu'on voit aujourd'hui, c'est Lila Ahir, mais il y a un mois à peine, elle vous a demandé de vous excuser pour le dîner que vous avez eu avec des ministres dans lesquels vous ne respectiez pas les règles sanitaires. Il n'y a pas vraiment eu d'erreur dans son ministère, donc on peut se demander si c'est la raison de son départ aujourd'hui. Non, pas du tout. Euh, de, temps, de temps en temps, il faut que le gouvernement se... Euh, avoir un renouvellement des personnages, c'est ce que nous faisons aujourd'hui avec euh, le réaniment du cabinet des ministres. Et euh, malheureusement, nous, nous ne pouvons pas avoir un conseil des ministres avec une soixantaine des, des députés. Il faut avoir des changements de temps en temps. Et euh, j'ai confiance dans cette équipe et, et j'ai hâte de travailler avec euh, les, les autres les, les euh, les anciens ministres euh, dans les nouvelles fonctions. Deux de vos, deux de vos nouveaux venus aujourd'hui viennent de circonscriptions rurales. Est-ce que vous tentez d'avoir un peu plus euh, d'attention tournée vers les circonscriptions rurales, peut-être pour les apaiser aussi? Non, je crois que largement, il y a un bon équilibre euh, en ce qui concerne euh, les régions de l'Alberta dans notre cabinet. Évidemment, euh, nous, nous manquons euh, les députés à Edmonton, avec l'exception de M. Madou, mais euh, il y a euh, pas, pas mal de ministres dans le conseil euh, qui viennent de Calgary. Mais écoutez, euh, euh, une, une quarantaine de nos députés viennent hors de Calgary et hors d'Edmonton. Et il, il faut que ces, ces régions-là soient euh, représentées dans le conseil des ministres. Et euh, je suis fier à nommer M. Horner, par exemple, euh, ministre euh, euh, pour euh, le développement économique euh, rural, euh, parce qu'une euh, grande majorité des richesses de l'Alberta euh, viennent des régions, de, 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 des industries euh, de ressources, par exemple. Et c'est important de s'assurer une future économique prospère uh, pour les communautés uh, rurales en Alberta. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate it. Enjoy the beautiful day. I'm melting out here with the, with the sun. <laughs>